Good morning. Thank you for tuning in to the Greater Heights Church of God in Christ in Tacoma, Washington. Hello, I am a Pastor Penton of the Greater Heights Church of God in Christ. So I welcome you today. And let me give you a bit of news if you haven't heard already. Uh, it is that they have approved uh, the administering of the vaccination for uh, the COVID-19, uh, the coronavirus. Uh, we don't know right now what the, what the results would be, but we do know we are closer than we've been before. It is, uh, it is commendable that God gave the wisdom to man uh, to discover uh, the way that they can fight off and give us uh, the ability to have immunity to this most dreadful disease. So a shout out, go to the medical uh, field and thank God, but we have to be very, very careful not to think we take the credit for it. Whoever the president may be or whoever uh, the scientist may be, whoever uh, the medical staff may be, we can thank God for allowing uh, those people to have the ability to discover it. And we definitely must praise God for that. I'm sure these are prayers that have been answered uh, for those that believe in Jesus Christ. So I'm just simply saying, uh, let us be careful not to give glory to man, but thank God for using man uh, to discover uh, this, uh, this remedy. Hopefully it would be a complete remedy like the polio vaccination was during that time. Because that's a dread, was a dreadful disease. So is uh, the, uh, the virus. But thank God, I feel much better. I'm looking forward to have the, the doctors tell us that we can fellowship again. Like if you see in the background, the empty church, I hope that one day soon that this church will be filled. But if it's not filled soon, eventually. But what I'm going to ask you to do, well, don't let that be uh, a reason why you don't engage yourself in worship with us by virtue of uh, like the YouTube or, or through Facebook or whichever way we come to you. Please come and listen to the Word of God uh, in, using those mediums so that you won't be left behind. But I tell you right now, I do miss you. I miss y'all. Some of y'all, I can see your face now. Some of y'all don't say much when you're here at church, but I, I, I miss your presence, and I hope you miss me as well. And so I'm not going to belay uh, uh, any longer about that, but I am going to say thank God uh, for uh, that uh, vaccination uh, so that we can look forward to another phase of, of our existence, if you will. But praise God, today what I would like to talk about and I would like to re-emphasize uh, God's grace and how we should understand it because if we really understood God's grace or thought about it, we'll be worshiping because it'll make us think about what we really deserve for our behavior, but yet God spared us because of His grace. In other words, uh, if you understand historically how the uh, God implemented the system whereby if you was caught in sin uh, among uh, the community, if you will, and uh, the priest or whoever could administer this, they stoned you to death. <laughs> they stoned you right there. 
and you didn't have no recourse about anything. But man uh, could not stop sinning. Man could not. Uh, he can only uh, do what he did in secret, and then, but in the sight of God, he was still guilty. But I thank God for God's grace. We're going to talk about that a little bit. And uh, what I would like to use for a theme, a scripture, uh, to emphasize this fact, I would like to use Titus. Titus, the third chapter, verses uh, 3, I mean, yeah, verse 3, uh, I'm sorry, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, as uh, my focus today. It says, it's not by works of righteousness which we have done, talking about all of us as believers, but according to what? His mercy, he say he saved us. And then he say by the washing of regeneration. Thank God for that. And renewing of the Holy Ghost. And then he say which he shared on us abundantly and through Jesus Christ our Savior. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad we serve a living Savior? Hallelujah. Every time I think of his goodness and all that he done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. You see, grace is really uh, achieved by our receiving. In other words, sometimes you may not benefit from grace in a way that you could if you don't understand the promises and if you don't understand the gifts, if you don't understand what God has contributed uh, through you by His grace, through the power of the Holy Ghost. I'm going to read a story that I read just a moment ago, uh, kind of give you uh, an indication what grace is and how we sometimes do not benefit from the totalness of God's gift to us because we don't know it. This is a little story, and I don't know, it was from uh, our Daily Bread periodical that was written, and this, it goes like that, this rather, if you allow me uh, to read this and you will see the point. He said, a little boy had an accident and was taken to an hospital. He said, and after he was made comfortable, a nurse brought him a large glass of milk. He looked longingly at it, but he did not pick it up. He had come from a poor home where his hunger was seldom satisfied. If he had never, if he had, if he never received a glass of milk, he, that's what it says, he never received a glass of milk. It was only partially filled when he was in this uh, place where he, he, he grew up. He said, and even that, he had to be, share, he had to share it with other children. And then he said, finally, he looked up at the nurse and asked, how deep may I drink? And uh, the nurse uh, replied, drink it all. There is more. You can see in this little boy a way of thinking, he wasn't accustomed to having a full glass of milk. Therefore, he was reluctant to drink it all. And she had to uh, reestablish to him, this is a gift for you. And it's you, it's yours to drink it all. Isn't that how God is? God has given us grace and it's up to us to receive it all. Hallelujah. If you don't know that you got grace, you won't benefit uh, from the fullness of God's grace. Thank God. Hallelujah. We got a father that have given us to know that is not by the works that we have done. This is an unmerited gift of God. So that's why when we have 
the, uh, and, and have grace and have the faith to believe that it was for us, not because we've done so good, not because we've been so good. It's no good works of our own, but we should be sensitive to the power of God to the point that every time, hallelujah, every time we think of what he done for us, every time when we think that was not by our power, not by our might, but it was by the power of the Holy Ghost. We should somehow in our mind, hallelujah, get excited and start singing a song in our heart, hallelujah, that would make merriment there and let us shout hallelujah for being saved and receiving of his grace. Just like that nurse had to reassure this little boy, you can drink it all because there's more where that come from. Hallelujah. That's a, a little exciting story because of who? It's the Savior. Then look what Titus say again. He said, but according to the mercy, uh, 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 he saved us, not because of our good works, not because we were benefactors for our good behavior, but it was because of his work on the cross and the agony that he shared on Calvary. Hallelujah. The blood that dropped. Hallelujah. Oh God. I heard some of the blood that Jesus shared for me way back on Calvary. The blood. Hallelujah. That give me strength and the blood that give me power. Hallelujah. Because when I think Hallelujah, the goodness, not only of the material blessing, but the grace that God, hallelujah, had given me. My soul shout, hallelujah, thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. This is why I can rejoice, because I recognize him as Savior. Just like the nurse, she said, I got more milk for you. Just take advantage of what you have right now. That's why I'm trying to tell all the people that are hearing my voice. You as believers, I'm not talking about these people just wishing for financial blessing, wishing for the house on the hill. But, oh, but we ought to just think that we are so unworthy. We may not feel that we are uh, worthy, but get in God's word to know that God has given us all that we have and we can rejoice. And then Luke said in 1, 47, he said, And my spirit has rejoiced in my Savior. Why did uh, Luke say this? Luke said this because, hallelujah, when you think about the things that God has done for you in spite of you, you ought to rejoice because he saved you. I remember uh, when I didn't know a lot of things, I simply just believed everything that God have told me. It took a, a learning curve for, to me to really understand uh, some things of God. I don't fully understand everything, but I was taught early on just to believe in God. Anything uh, is possible. So I, I tried many things and I, I was pleasantly disappointed in some. I remember uh, very well when I was a little boy. I used to hear my mom pray to God and consequently I thought God just do anything I asked him to do and I wanted to know for sure. So I just believed. So I was a little boy sleeping in the bed, thought I could uh, uh, at least uh, physically uh, see the hand of God move in something that I had put as a request. I remember, as silly as this was, as I was sleeping in the bed, I'd say, I'm going to do something and prove something about uh, bleed my faith. So I was in the bed, I held my hand up, and I'd say, I'm going to witness uh, sleeping with my hand up. And when I get up, my hand, I'm going to know when my hand, uh, you know, went down because I'm going to be aware. I remember very well. I fell asleep, but I woke up, my hand was down. Never knew <laughs> when my hand felt, because I never knew the time I went to sleep. See, the point is, sometimes we try to tempt God 
to try to see what God do what we want him to do rather than try to learn what he's already done for us through the power of the Holy Ghost. I was once was lost without salvation. I once was deep in sin, seeking to rise no more, but the love of Christ forgave me of all my sins, and thank God, hallelujah, I can realize that I'm saved by His grace. As silly as that experiment was, sometimes we do God like that. We try to make God do what we want Him to do, and we need to, hallelujah, to do what God say do. Now, the only way you're going to be able to do that is with the Word of God. You have to understand what God is saying. He said uh, in John 4 and uh, a portion of 42nd uh, verse, he said, And for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Sometime, hallelujah, we have to rely upon things that happened to us in the past. And sometimes we have to rely upon God's grace. I remember very, very well how that felt as my father, for example. My father, at the time when I tell this story, my father wasn't saved. He happened to be an alcoholic. But my mom, she was a missionary in the church, but she taught us to love our father. So we never disrespected our dad. He was a strong disciplinarian. I mean, she, and she was as well. I remember uh, as naughty as I was as a little boy, uh, I accidentally burned the house down. There's a copy in my book when it become published, uh, The Burning House. I accidentally burned at least a room in the house. Uh, I was looking for something under the dresser and and it was in, in the daytime, but it was dark underdressed, so I lit a, lit a candle and to look, search for what I was looking for, and I put the candle to look for it, and oh, I found what I was looking for, and then I ran back, back outside, and consequently, I went to play marbles, and lo and behold, my friend saw the plastic curtain go up in flame, and I immediately got frightened and ran back in the house try to put the fire out before my mom came home and my dad. But make a long story short, oh, I knew I was going to get the beating of my life. The fire department came and, and all that happened and the furniture uh, that was in that room, it was one bedroom, was thrown out in the yard and it was still smothering room with smoke and I was there sitting and my mom was saying, wait till your dad come home and I knew I was going to get the beating of my life because I got beaten for lesser things and I knew I was going to get a beating for uh, burning uh, the project. We live in the project, that room. So I was waiting, waiting to be, I guess you would almost call it, waiting to be executed <laughs> because I knew that something was going to happen when Dad got home. So I braced myself, waiting to get this beating of my life. So I saw my dad come. Somebody evidently brought my dad home. He was a mechanic, but he never owned a car. But he came home, and when I saw him, I braced myself. My dad called me, uh, Wang. He said, son, uh, uh, and I said, okay, here we go. He said, son, I, I know this has been tough on you. Wow. I, I, and he said, I'm not going to whoop you this, this time. What? I've never experienced grace from dad like this. <laughs> and he didn't whoop me. I was so touched by such an act because I was deserving of some type of uh, beating, but my heart was broken, and consequently, the love of my father forgave me to the point where I know I deserve a beating. But thanks be to God, it is just like us right now. We deserve the punishment that our sins have, have caused us to be involved with. But then God said, I sent my son to pay the price 
for your sin. And as Titus said again, but according to his mercy, he saved us. And I can say according to my father, uh, mercy, I didn't get a beating. But I never started another fire again. But look what I'm saying to us. Sometimes we know we deserve a punishment, but the joy come not for us trying to justify. Say, God, uh, Dad, I made a mistake. Uh, Dad, I was looking for this. Dad, uh, no, no, I didn't have to say anything. He knew, hallelujah, that I'd done wrong, and he had the power as a father to forgive me. Just like Jesus, being our Savior, have the power to forgive us. So that's why we as believers should not be thinking that we are so deserving of, of what we get from God. We are undeserving. That's why we have to thank God for the washing of our regeneration through the renewing of the power, through the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Then, of course, again, he said, which he shared uh, to us, on us, abundantly through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad of God's grace? That's what I'm trying to say, because we as believers should really be a worshipers of God, because we are undeserving, and he came down. Hallelujah. Not like we have done something good. Not like we have done God a favor. Like we deserve it. Hallelujah. His love made it possible. His power uh uh, did it for us. You know, I was just thinking, we sometimes let the enemy control our mind. We ought to rebuke the devil because, hallelujah, it was the power of Jesus Christ that gave us the victory. We are undeserving, but it was God that gave us the victory. Hallelujah. And, and realize it, it was because we were truly lost. Somebody say, I found Jesus. <laughs> no, no, no. Jesus found you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I remember there was a group used to call, I found uh, Jesus. I, I found him. That's really erroneous when you, when you really think of it. Because uh, he, he found us. It wasn't that we knew how to be found, but through his love. There's a, the scripture just uh, sustained that. That, com that commitment of that we were lost. I think it was in, in John, uh, hallelujah, John, I mean, I'm sorry, Luke 19 and 10, where he said, for the Son of Man come what? To seek, uh-huh, and, and, and to save that which was lost. Woo! The act of God's grace, hallelujah, and, the, and our response to that act should be praised. Hallelujah. When he found me, hallelujah, I recognized I was a sinner, a wretch undone. And then the enemy tried to bring me back uh, to try to punish me, making me feel unworthy, which that is true. I'm unworthy. But his grace, hallelujah, made me worthy because he washed me. Hallelujah. You see, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. See, it was not because of your deeds, but he's a new creature. So, so what am I saying? We need to rejoice. Hallelujah. Because we have a God that is rich in mercy. According to Ephesians 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 4 and 5. He said, but God, who is what? Rich in mercy uh, for his grace his great love with, uh, wherewith he loved, loveth us. That's a, a continuum. He loveth us. He said, even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us, made us come alive, us together with Christ, by grace we are saved. Thank you, Jesus. We can rejoice. Hey, when the enemy try to hold against us, all of our sins. It was the power of the living God. Hallelujah. May not feel like it all the time. Oh, may not feel like running and jumping and shouting. But when I think of the grace of God, 
I heard the writer, uh, at least the lyrics of a song, when he said, Amazing Grace. And then he went on to say, How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but what? Now I'm found. Hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. See, this is why I feel the way I feel now. It was because of his grace. Woo, I could preach that, hallelujah. For we have everlasting life according to his grace. Just like my dad did not punish me, I loved him for it. I wanted to brag on him. My dad was the best mechanic in the projects, yet he never owned the car, as I said earlier. But my dad could fix the car blindfold because he was a gifted in his gift. See, Jesus, hallelujah, was a soul fixer. Hallelujah, Jesus was a regeneration because this humanity is broken. But when God put us together again, we are made whole in his righteousness, not in our righteousness, but in his righteousness, we can rejoice as if we had never sinned, not because we have been perfect, but because his grace is sufficient for us all. Hallelujah. We once was lost, had no hope nowhere, and the enemy was ready to destroy us and to keep us from the eternal life that was promised. But we ought to look at the hope that that we have in Jesus because we have Jesus which shed on us abundantly hallelujah his love and his forgiveness I feel like preaching because I recognize I'm in an empty church but full of the Holy Ghost can you say yes even if I don't hear you on the media whereby we are reaching you from. You ought to say it in your heart. Thank you, Jesus, for lifting me up, washing me with your blood. He said, the blood that Jesus shed for me way back on Calvary. I used to wonder how the, uh, the saints, uh, when they hung him on the cross, uh, people became sad. Uh, but I heard Jesus say, uh, Oh God, uh, when they laid him down, uh, nailed his hand to the cross, uh, pierced his feet, uh, and then stood the cross up uh, on the side of the mountain uh, on Golgotha. Uh, when I was in Israel, uh, they showed me that mountain. Uh, it was more or less a hill uh, where men and women uh, could walk and see it very clearly. Uh, I can see uh, them ridiculing him uh, and talking about him. Uh, but I heard the Bible said, uh, oh God, they were so sad, uh, but they lifted him up uh, and the word declared. Uh, he said, if I be lifted up uh, above the earth, uh, I would draw all men uh, unto me. Go ahead and nail me to the cross. I did it for you and I because in three days I'm going to rise again and show the world that I am he, the savior of the world. They done had their fun several days ago. They done thought they had got rid of me seven days ago. Oh, but it was way in the midnight hour the angels came down and rolled the stone away and the power of God raised me from the dead. Thank you, Jesus. See, I saw that tomb, at least the tomb they allegedly say that Jesus was buried in. It was empty, but it was somebody in the tomb. There was a tourist happened to be in the tomb praying when I peeked in the hole to see where Jesus was laying, at least the ledge place, but he was not there. Just like the angel said, 
when Mary and Martha came. Why seek ye to live in among the dead? He ain't here no more because he arose again. I remember I said once and, and had the time wrong. How many people or how many years that people saw him raised? But I think it was only 500 days where people saw him walking among the people. Hallelujah. Even then, some of the disciples did not recognize who he was when he was walking. Hallelujah long. And they didn't know that they was looking at Jesus. Hallelujah. But let's get back to grace. Sometimes we don't know that we are looking at Jesus when we praise him. We are looking at Jesus when we acknowledge him as the savior of our soul. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you. So don't you be so quick to, to glorify any political party over the praising of your God and your Savior. You can thank man for his effort, but you need to thank God for what he's done for you. And you that learning to hate other people because they different opinion about what you believe. But we ought to believe one thing, that we all was sin. We all have sin and come short of the glory of God. We ought to recognize that. You ain't no better than me if you live in a gated community and I live in a tent on the side of the road. Long as I recognize Jesus died for my sins and I received his grace. Thank you, Jesus. I'm preaching in an empty church right now, but I hear the Spirit of God saying, go on and preach the word. If I have to say it, I'm preaching to myself, but you're going to hear this on YouTube, and I'm preaching to you today because we serve a risen Savior, and my soul rejoice. Woo! Because I serve a risen Savior. Thank you, Jesus. I don't confess it with my mouth. According to Romans 10 and 9, I don't confess it with my mouth, the Lord Jesus. And the Bible says he shall, and, and I not only have I confessed him, and shall believe in my heart that God have raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. I'm saved by his power divine. I'm saved by his life sublime. My joy is complete as I kneel at his feet because I cry out, I'm saved, saved, saved. Thank God for grace. I feel like preaching. Thank God for allowing me to preach today because I got the power of the Holy Ghost, hallelujah, and it's keeping me alive. Oh, glory, 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 hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, friends, do not treat me like they used to, but thank God, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter whether you like the person I didn't vote for I, who I voted for. It doesn't matter long as I don't turn my back on Jesus. Woo, I felt like preaching. Hey, I wish I could feel like this all the time. Well, I believe God all the time, but I don't feel like this all the time. <laughs> but right now, I feel the greatness of God moving on the inside of me. So you need to. Take a hold to this faith, not in the virus vaccination. And I encourage you, as the scientists and the doctors recommend. Now, this one thing you got to remember. The Apostle Paul had a physician, <laughs> and his name was Luke, who wrote the book of Luke. Some of you didn't know he was a physician. It was Paul, physician. <laughs> 
And, and some of you, tomorrow, I just believe in God. I'm going to just uh, worship. You can't keep me from having church. Nobody ain't keeping you from having church. They're just trying to keep you alive the best they can. Everybody don't want to wear their mask. I do not like wearing my mask because I've got a natural smile. And I want everybody to see my smile. But I want to take uh, the uh, precaution and do what I'm asked to do. But I can still nod my head in uh, saluting people as I see them in the store. May not necessarily uh, see they see my smile, but they should see the gesture of appreciation because I'm wearing the mask to save you and also to protect myself because at the same time we must do it. So I'm encouraging the saints, first of all, to worship God and worship Him not just by uh, measuring uh, your relationship with Him because you got a lot of money. Amen. I, I know in my, in my spirit that I physically, God is going to allow me to have resources in this present world. Wealth, I know that. And that's what I really believe in my heart. But you know what? I ain't going to start praising God when I get it. I got it right now. I'm rich right now. I'm abundantly rich in His grace. Hallelujah. Money would just be a byproduct of me so I can buy that sweet wife I've been married to uh, for 50 years. I can just go to the store and she told me uh, that just the other day, she said, me, well, we don't have to buy each other nothing, uh, you know, and that's true. We buy each other things all the time. We give to each other all the time. And I might just go ahead. I looked through her jewelry box. Uh, just the other day. I don't know what to buy. All those rings that I done bought through the years and necklaces that she done bought me. And, and, and I just think uh, what I'm simply saying is that we love each other enough to respect each other enough whereby we can praise each other and be thankful for what God has given us. That's the same way. And even better, you should praise God and be thankful for Him because of His grace. Thank y'all for letting me preach today. I felt like preaching, and I know, I believe, I've done uh, a masterful job in emphasizing God's grace. Hallelujah. Go ahead, preachers, you that have a, a television ministry, go ahead. But I know this, <laughs> and I'm going to say this, I'm closing, and this is no reflection. My wife was telling me how well I heard T.D. Jakes preach. This man got thousands of uh, members and they'd be there at his church. But I heard him preach uh, the other day and my wife said, you know, and he was preaching like he was preaching to all those thousands he had on Sunday and nobody was there. And I said, wow, now yeah, think about it. Think about it. Even the small church that had their worship in garages and storefront, we all got an even footing, <laughs> hallelujah. We, we can preach from our garage to the world with the social media that we have right now. Have you thought about that? Thank you, Facebook people. I know Zirkenberg is going through some tough time now, but I'm praying that God would bless him to see the light, that even all his billions, he still need God. So, hey, Mr. Zirkenberger, if you want to help somebody preach the word of God, Hey, call me. Call me. My name is John Penton. Call me. I, uh, you won't make me no more happy than I am. What you will simply do, give me enough money so I can do feed, help feed the people that God is blessing us to be, take partnership with now. We feeding people. And my shout goes out to those that are working with greater heights to help feed those that uh, need food and stuff. And we've been blessed to do that. Not me personally, but I commend those that God has blessed that are working with others in this community. And that's Sister Shirley and her, all of those that are working with her. Please forgive me if I don't call your name, uh, but if you're a servant of God, keep on working because we all saved by grace. Well, since I felt like preaching, I'm going to preach on, preach on. <laughs> and you can see I'm ready to go more because I felt the Spirit of God. Okay, before I go too far, let us sign off. Let me pray for you. 
If you're there in your living room, if you're there wherever you may be, in your bedroom, I want you to pray this with me. And we're going to give God a, a, a praise report. We're going to say, come on, just come on, bow your heads with me. Thank you, Jesus. Go ahead and say it. Thank you, Jesus, first of all, for making it possible for me to have salvation. And God, forgive me of all my sins. And God, today, I'm going to believe that I'm saved, not by my doing. I'm going to read the scripture again uh, that I read in the beginning, Titus 3, verses 5 and 6. It says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. That's what, and let's just put it in words, uh, personal. Not by works of righteousness which I have done. And he said, but according to what? God's mercy, he saved me. And by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shared on uh, to us or to me abundantly through Christ Jesus our Lord. So let that be your prayer and let us thank God. Thank you again. Amen. Givelify is giving simplified. Givelify is the simplest, most beautiful way to give and track donations to the place of worship or charity of your choice. You're not limited to the cash you have on hand. There's no need to write checks, and there are no complicated forms to fill out or text message codes to remember. Givelify automatically pinpoints your location and intelligently identifies the fundraiser, worship service, or conference you're attending without the need to search. Since Givelify automatically detects where you are, making a donation can be completed in as few as three taps. Tap 1. Use one of the pre-configured denominations to choose your donation amount. Tap 2. Select the campaign to which you'd like to contribute. Tap 3. With your stored credit or debit card, complete your donation in one tap and get an immediate donation receipt. Setting up recurring giving is a simple two-tap process. Tap the frequency you'd like, and you'll never forget to make your gift. Givelify lets you easily see your complete donation history. Mark the place of worship you normally attend as your home for quick one-tap access. Givelify. Tap. Give. Done. If you would like to give online, through the church's website, go to Greater Heights kojic.com from there you would go to give add the amount that you would want to give and then hit submit 